I didn't make a script for this. I'm just kind of winging it. So that's why I'm like trying to think here. It's magical when you are close. You so get close, babe. What do you got? Cause I am gold. I'm golden. Hey guys. I'm really sorry about missing yesterday's video, but we've had a few issues with our dog who's a little sick right now. So just kind of dealing with that, but we're back to our scheduled programming. And I just wanted to give you guys a few tips on displaying your stuff at events and farmer's markets. So I consider events and farmer's markets the same thing. You want to draw people in, you want to create a buying experience, and you want to make it as pleasant as possible, and you want to make it as awesome as possible because you literally have two seconds uh, of someone's attention when they're walking by and it's in those two seconds that you can make your impression and they'll either like it and come in or they'll either not like it and leave. So you gotta be able to grab their attention and present yourself in a way that's really, really appealing. So you can notice with my display, I use these amazing risers and I notice an immediate rise and uptick of people stopping at our table. And these beautiful risers I got on Etsy, if you wanna know who the crafter is, I have the link down below, but he makes these amazing quality risers that also collapse. If you notice that there's um, a few components to it, it all comes apart, which means it's travel friendly, which means it's perfect for farmers markets and events because every space in your car is premium. <laughs> the second piece of advice that I would give you guys is to use a tablecloth. And if you're selling bath and body products, I would say white is the best way to go. Psychologically, if you think bath and, bath and beauty products, you think cleanliness, you think luxury, you think purity. So the best way to convey that, I think, is either on a white or neutral tablecloth. And if you make colorful stuff like I do, it just makes it pop that much more and people just gravitate towards a nice, clean, white setup when it comes to selling bath and body products. Of course, there are exceptions. If you have an established brand that's associated with a very specific color, use yellow, use green, use purple. But I do find when it comes to targeting a very specific type of customer, they seem to be drawn to white, neutral tablecloths. The third piece of advice that I would give you guys is to be constantly looking at your display. Always look at what needs to be cleaned off because if you're transporting your products from your house to an event, things can get onto the lids. Um, if you have a pet, there could be a stray dog or cat hair. There could be so many things that you could be cleaning off of your products. So be constantly making sure that your products look impeccable and completely dirt and dust free. The fourth tip for you guys is to treat your farmer's market stall or event stall just like a farmer would. So when you think of a farmer's market, you think abundance. Think of these tables overflowing with vegetables and um, fruit and just abundance. So think of that when it comes to your display. You wanna give the impression that there is a lot of stuff there for them to buy. If you have a scant table with not that many things on it, people tend to not really wanna go shopping there. But if you have shelves that are stocked and look full, people just come right to that, like, what is this? I've had people stop by and ask me, is this fudge? Because it just looks so delicious and, and full. And I try to bring everything, or I try to uh, put everything that I have up on my display. And that's kind of how I make it look as full as possible because I don't like, first of all, going back into my tub to replenish stuff because I'm kind of lazy, but also it really does help to have a very, very full um, display. Was that, was that number four? <laughs> uh, I didn't make a script for this. I'm just kind of winging it. So that's why I'm like trying to think here. <laughs> 
Tip number five, have your branding on point. So that means business cards. If you have a website, you want people to know that there's a website. If you have an Etsy, you want people to know that there's an Etsy. Have a big banner. That is another way to grab people's attention. We, when we first started doing the farmer's markets, we made sure to have a really big banner that had a big, huge picture of our soap on it and exactly what we sold. Because like I mentioned, people are looking into your booth and it's literally two seconds of them deciding whether or not they should shop there. You wanna make sure that they know exactly what's in there because if they're passing by, and like I mentioned before, someone thought we were selling fudge. They're passing by, they see fudge, they're like, eh, I'm not a big fudge person, and then they will keep walking. But if they are huge handmade soap people, wow, this is really beautiful handmade soap that looks like fudge. <laughs> so I would definitely go and print a banner of some sort. We I've made several banners over the three years that I've been vending at events and I've always bought them from Vistaprint. Pro tip, they always have a 50% off sale every couple of months. I usually find it's worth it to wait for that 50% discount <laughs> because that's a huge savings. And this is one of the biggest things that you can start doing to have people uh, gravity towards your booth and to start building your customer base. The sixth tip, watch the traffic. If you watch the traffic, you'll notice where the majority of people start to come in towards your booth. So you will begin to understand what they first see and the last thing that they see. For instance, with a handmade soap booth, the first thing they'll want to see is soap. If I, if I were in the table and these were my two stalls here, and this is me back here, and people are coming from this way, I would probably have the soap right here. The last thing I want people to see are those last minute impulse buys. And for me, a last minute impulse purchase is almost always the lip balms. Why? Because it's cheap, because it's small, usually they have kids and sometimes they're fussy and a lot of times people will want to get a lip balm because it's something that people always need and I like to have a lot of selection there, a lot of bright pictures on the jars. Like a 60% success rate of people who have completely dismissed my booth will turn around and come back just because I have those lip balms there. I would say your showstopper, most attention grabbing product should be in the middle, which is where I usually have my bath bombs. The reason why I love displaying the bath bombs like this is because they most resemble a farmer's market stall in that they look like apples, they look like fruit, they look like beautiful, abundant, round balls of goodness. Usually people see that as they're walking by and they'll wanna go straight towards those bath bombs. So those are my tips on how to display your stuff at a farmer's market or an event and this is all stuff that we have learned over the years by observing and that's another, maybe it's tip number seven. Observe, see what works, see what doesn't, change that. And I hope you found this video worth it. I hope you found it educational. I hope you learned a thing or two. I hope it inspired you and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys. Like and